Today I stand before you to declare God's faithfulness. I am Alex Revilla. My wife Dida and I were married in May 1995. And perhaps like most married couples, my wife and I were not spared from the famous adjustment period. Not having God at the center of our relationship, we lived our first year of marriage as we saw fit. We made decisions based on personal gain. We achieved this by doing whatever it would take, whether it was the right or wrong thing to do. Things were going well for the first few months until arguments became more frequent. We would quarrel about petty things like how to hang your towel after use or make sure to switch the lights off. This became part of our weekly routine. From there, arguments escalated to more serious quarrels which were never resolved but rather swept under the rug only to be brought up again when each of us needed more dirt to throw to each other. Having no one to share her anger with, my wife de decided to, to call her Christian friend because she noticed that her friend's marriage was working out really well and she wanted to know how to achieve the same. After lengthy talks with my wife, her friend invited her to attend an all-wives weekly Bible study. At first, I was very apprehensive about her going to Bible studies until I noticed how nice it felt to come home most especially on Tuesdays, which was her Bible study day. As time went on, things just started getting better in all aspects of our relationship. Although still apprehensive, I went as far as sponsoring lunch for her whole Bible group as I saw with my own two eyes the good it was doing to my wife. Although I saw this to be good for my wife, I told myself that I did not need this. A few days after, my wife and her friends decided to invite all their husbands to join them for dinner and Bible study after. I hesitantly, hesitantly, hesitantly agreed, but did, but did go anyway to appease my wife. The dinner went well, but when Bible study started, I found my mind wandering all over the place. I just could not get myself to concentrate at what was being told to me. The night ended, and the very thing that my wife wanted to happen never did. My wife continued on with her weekly Bible studies as I went on with my carefree way of life. One day, my wife again invited me, but this time to a weekend retreat of CCF at Puerto Azul. It took a lot of convincing from her before I again hesitantly agreed to attend. I figured that I saw so much break, break times in the retreat schedule, which would give me a lot of time to the beach. The beach. When we arrived at Puerto Azul, I was very surprised to see a lot of familiar faces, which somehow put me at ease. Close friends who saw me uh, even asked me jokingly, Oh, Alex, what are you doing here? That, the day went on and I found myself being very attentive and eager to learn more. When I read 1 Peter 3, 1, it dawned on on me that the, cha the changes taking place in my wife's behavior were based on the Bible, and this attracted me even more. On the last day of the retreat, after reading and hearing John 3.16, and learning how Jesus died for all of us as payment for all our sins, I willingly received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. From then on, my wife and I put God in the center of our relationship. We continued to grow in the knowledge of God's Word by attending Bible studies and going to Sunday worship. It was then that we wanted to complete our family by trusting God's promise to give us a child, as written in Psalm 127, 3 to 5. Once again, a trial was set before us. My wife and I never realized that we would have any difficulty in having a child. We first got pregnant on our own, but lost the baby on the third month of pregnancy. We continued to try for another two years, and it was at this time that it became an obsession for my wife to get pregnant. 
she started reading and learning about everything on pregnancy. She would consult fertility doctors. She would master all treatments as well as the medicine used all for naught. After going to dozens of doctors here in the Philippines, there in the Philippines, we decided it was time to tap doctors here in the United States who did in vitro fertilization. That year, we found ourselves in San Francisco prepared and ready to go through the IVF procedure. We went through the whole procedure with negative results. My wife was so devastated that within the same year, we were again back in San Francisco for the same procedure, but this time with a different doctor. Again, our hearts were crushed by the, dis the disappointing results. The doctor went as far in telling us that donor eggs would increase our, our chances, but this was an option I was not willing to explore. With heavy hearts, we went back home to the Philippines. Three months later, we were surprised to find out we were again pregnant without the help of doctors. We were anxiously waiting for weeks to hear the heartbeat of the baby, which sadly never came. It was a false pregnancy. With yet another setback to have a child of our own, the idea of adoption became a real option. Although I saw nothing wrong with adopting, I had to be honest and told my wife that I just was not ready to adopt yet. I felt that it would, it would be unfair to the child if my heart was not 100% sure that I wanted him or her. More importantly, my reason was that I was so sure that God was going to hear our prayers and grant us our own child. Somehow, I could tell that she wanted to believe me but, but was unsure if this would really happen. After almost a year, my wife again wanted to go back to the States for another IVF procedure, but this time I said no. I told my wife that I believed God was trying to tell us something. The message to me was to be still and lift up the problem to him. After all, he said in 1 Corinthians 10, 3, 13 that he would always give us a way out. No doctor was going to give us the child. No one but God. After that conversation, my wife told me that somehow she had also decided to let go and let God. Months after that, Tita Rosa Rosal referred us to a reproductive immunologist in Manila. We figured no harm in seeing another doctor. So we went to this doctor on November 2000 and were prescribed a long-term treatment comprising of three stages of preparation with actual treatment to start in January 2001. He specifically told us not to get pregnant during December as this is a busy month because of Christmas and my wife would be most likely moving around a lot. So we went on with the holidays and even had a Baguio vacation right after Christmas. On January 10, 2001, after only having completed one preparatory stage, my wife gave me the shocking news that we were pregnant. I somehow could not believe this as the treatment had barely started and that my wife had conceived only days before Christmas. It was a delicate pregnancy. My wife had to take long periods of complete bed rest. After five years of waiting and praying for a child, God blessed us with Andy. As I stand before you today, I want to thank God for restoring my relationship with him and with my wife. I also thank God for answering our prayers and giving us his gifts to us, our very own daughters, Andy, followed by another Lexi, and our youngest, Maxine. To God be all the praise and glory. Thank you.